Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming back at you. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. This is the carburetor from the GT80. I already pulled a couple of screws off. And then I said, you know what? I gotta do a video on this. So, because I don't even know. I don't remember if I cleaned this carburetor or not. Um, I don't remember. It doesn't look like I did. It looks pretty grungy. So, I'm gonna assume I didn't. I do know that the insulator is smashed. It's broken. And what does that is when the air filter is not connected, it, it, uh, or the air filter is connected on it, but it's missing the bracket, this will rock back and forth with the bumps. Um, on the KV75, they put a bracket on the end of the air filter, and, and the carburetor is not holding all the weight of the air filter. On certain bikes, they are. But these are very common to break. They get old, they get cracked. So, I had one in my parts bin right here, so we need to replace it. So I can use this carburetor as the one that came off that bike. I remembered I had it, so I had to go dig it out. Um, so anyway, I'm going to pull the bowl off it. I want to see what's inside, what the condition is. Judging from these lines, they're all stiff and, you know, who knows? Who knows what I'm looking at? So we're going to take it apart and take a quick peek. I encourage all you guys to get out there and take your bikes apart, check them out, and see what's going on. Don't be afraid to take them apart. Um, part of the thing is, is you know, you don't know until you get into it. And don't be afraid of taking apart something that's already broken. As it is, it's already broken. So at this time, guys, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. So when I post a video, you guys get to see it. So this is the, um, the GT80 that I got from Harvey Spooner. Once again, if you guys haven't had a chance, go over there and check out his channel. Um, you'll actually see me picking up the bike at his place. He's got a video, and you'll see the condition of it when I got it. Bike was in really good shape. Um, like I said, just missing a couple of little, a couple of parts. Here we go. Here's the moment of truth right here. But yeah, get over there and check out his channel. He's a great guy. Oh. Wow. Guys, that's clean in there, huh? A little bit of corrosion on the float, but nothing bad. I'm going to see the light if I can see the jets. All right, so if you're looking at the jets, the main and the pilot, you can see light through them. This car is clean. A little bowl. Now, a lot of times, this is common, okay? You'll see a bowl like this, and you'll be like, oh, wow, that's a nice clean bowl. Even though you have a clean bowl, you can still have a pinhole in it. So what I do is I take a flashlight and I stick it on the other end of it. See if I can do this without blinding you guys. Hold on. You want to look inside it and see if you see any holes. Now this one's a good bowl. But sometimes, see if I can find one real quick. Uh, I have a bowl from a, a, a KV75. Um, this one right here. And I'll show you this. Okay. So when I put this light onto it, you can see the pinhole right there through the side of it. You know, not this big one. This is the ejector hole. That's supposed to be big. But there's a hole right on the side of this thing. You can see how big it is. So, and that is right here. I'm going to show you guys on another video how to fix those. Because uh, that is actually still a good bowl. So you always want to check for light. That's the light test. Um, and go from there. So I'm very impressed with this carburetor. Um, this is uh, definitely a runner. Um hands down this is going to go back on that bike with ease these are vent tubes by the way guys these don't hook up to anything they just vent out so i'm not going to replace them at this time they are factory um however i'm very impressed with this cabrera So that means this carburetor will be a runner. That bike is in really good shape. I mean, the inside of the tank is clean too. So I kind of expected the carburetor to be as well. But the other part of this is going to be getting out that insulator. Out of the back of it. Put all these screws back in. 
it's very important to get all the screws back into these things, you know. There you go. Okay, man. Boom, boom, boom. Hope everybody's doing good. A lot of crap going on with that coronavirus, huh? Ugh. Jeez. All right, so now we're going to have to get out the uh, insulator right there. So let me get some stuff to uh, get that out with. All right, so let's see if we can get this uh, insulator out. And we're going to use a brass hammer. Just a small, tiny little one. You can see how, how big it is. It's not very big at all. And then um, <coughs> some brass screwdrivers that I use for doing this type of stuff. All right, so let's get uh, let's get cracking. All right, so what I'm going to do is you can see in here the insulator. This piece right here is it's fit in there and it's kind of like glued in. So we're not going to glue them. I don't glue them because sometimes you have to take them back out and they don't move. I'm going to look at the position of the lines. So if you see on the, uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, it's kind of hard to see. You can see there's lines on it. See those lines? I want to put those back where they came from on here. So I'm going to note where they are. And then I'm just going to take my screwdriver and kind of chisel it out. It will break apart. You're going to break it up into chunks like that. Uh, but anyway, it's going to be kind of a pain in the neck to do. Happens. Don't be afraid of it. A big piece. And then I try to cut through the, the top part where the screw goes. I try to cut through that part. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. Okay. Sorry about that. I couldn't do that on the camera just because of the uh, lighting. But you can see right here where I chipped away that piece right there. And then it shrinks in, and then you can pull the whole thing out. And that's what right there is what you're left with. A nice clean surface. Then we'll take the new insulator. And we'll see if we can get that in there. You're going to want to loosen up your clamp. I always take the screw completely out. So you're going to loosen up that clamp right there and take the screw completely out. Now what I'm doing is I'm sanding this down to fit because it's slightly bigger than the hole. Just slightly. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take it off evenly until I get down to my desired amount. Okay? I'll be back. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to show you guys a little secret that I do. Um, because I deal with this problem a lot on a lot of different bikes, and I have a lot of these things that I keep um, to do this with. And, of course, you're going to have to find your own insulators because I don't stock these. Um, but to fit into here to get them to the right size. So many people are like, oh, if you sand it down, it's going to be uneven on one side and not the other. So I'm going to show you guys a little trick that I use. So this tool right here is for using a cutoff wheel, and it goes into a drill bit, and you put your cutoff disc in there, so, you know, like a three-inch disc. You screw that on there, and you put it in your drill, and you can cut through metal. Well, what I use is I go like this with it. I take it, I set it inside here because it fits perfectly, and then I center it up until it's pretty darn close, hand tight. Don't go over see how it's sitting. Pretty much right in the center. Snug it up by hand. I stick it in my M12. And then I can just sit there and go. Like that until I get the desired thickness I want. When I get down to the right thickness, then I can install it. I'll be back. All right. So after turning it down, using sandpaper and a flat um, file for a chainsaw. 
get this thing to turn down. Let's check the fit. Yeah, tap it in nice and gently. Might have to turn it down a little bit more. When you have to tap it in, that is a good fit. You got to keep stopping and checking it in light, gentle taps because you don't want this thing to crack or break. And there you have it. New insulator in there. And that is good. Put the bolt back in. Let's say it goes on the side over here. And now this carburetor right here is ready for installation. So we replaced the broken insulator. It was a tedious process. It takes about 20-25 minutes to do it, but depend upon which insulator you get. These are very hard to find online, so get the proper ones if you can. If you can't, it's for Makuni, and that's called an insulator. If yours is broken, excuse me, if it's broken, you can always get a, uh, what do you call it there, another carburetor, and see if you can extract it. I've had pretty good luck doing that. And then open it up. Open up your gap here using a screwdriver, tapping it down, tap it down to expand it. So when this does tighten up, it'll be nice and tight. And that's pretty much it for this carburetor, guys. This thing's RTG ready to go. So um, tomorrow we'll install it and see if we can't get this um, bike to fire up. Get rid of this little fuel line. See if we can't get this carburetor to fire up on its own and uh, go from there. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Um, hopefully you guys learned something on this video. So this is part of the GT80. Um, and uh, we're just going to keep plugging away at the bike until we get it fired up. We get some parts that we have to put on order. Um, I haven't quite done that yet. But um, I got to get I gotta get cracking on that. Get those that coil in the bracket coming. So anyway guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And if there's anything I can do for you guys, please let me know. Talk to you later. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.